Now that we know how to use our solubility chart, we're going to see what to do with it. Well, it says here in step four, if something's an aqueous compound, aqueous compounds, we're going to break up into their ions because that's what aqueous things do. They break up into their ions, right? Just like those pictures that we were just looking at on the previous page of our NaCl dissolving in water or that KCl dissolving in water. When something's aqueous, when something dissolves in water, it does not stay together as KCl or NaCl. It breaks up into its ions. So anytime you see your chemical, its state of matter is aqueous, we're going to break up that aqueous thing into its components. Anything that's not aqueous, if it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas, we're going to leave that alone. So right now, you know how to tell if it's a solid. Liquids and gases, we'll get to those soon. So let's see an example for a start from scratch. What if I told you you have sodium phosphate and copper 2 sulfate reacting with one another? Your first step would be to figure out what the products are and balance the reaction. This is a double displacement reaction because I see compound plus compound. So our sodium is going to go with sulfate and copper is going to go with phosphate. We balance out our charges of sodium and sulfate, Na's plus 1, sulfate's minus 2, so we have Na2SO4 as one product. Our copper goes with phosphate. Now copper can have a couple different charges, but whatever the charges of copper on the left-hand side of the reaction is going to match the charge of the copper on the right-hand side of the reaction. We look over here on the left-hand side, we can figure out that this is copper Roman numeral 2 sulfate because we only need one sulfate ion to balance it out. And copper, or sulfate's charge is minus two. Copper's gotta be plus two. So we take copper plus two, combine that with a phosphate ion, and we get Cu3PO42. We're gonna go to our solubility chart now and figure out what the states of matter are on all these things. So the first chemical, this Na3PO4, sodium phosphate, I'm going to go to my chart or my solubility chart here and figure out sodium phosphate. There's a couple different ways you could look it up. You could look at it from the sodium perspective. Sodium with any anion, it doesn't matter what you combine sodium with, it's always going to be soluble, and soluble means aqueous. You could also look at it from the phosphate perspective. Phosphates with alkali ions. And if you forget what the alkali ions are, they're listed up there at the top, and sodium's one of them. Phosphates with alkali ions, soluble, aqueous. So that's why over here, I put the solubility, the state of matter for our sodium phosphate is AQ. I'm gonna do the same thing with my copper two sulfate, the sodium sulfate, and the copper two phosphate. So let's check our copper 2 sulfate. When we look at sulfates with barium, strontium, lead plus 2, calcium, or silver are insoluble. Copper is not part of that insoluble list. It falls into the all other category. So copper with sulfate, soluble. That's why over here we have our state of matter for CuSO4 is aqueous. Our sodium sulfate, anything that has that sodium ion in it, it doesn't matter what it's combined with, is going to be soluble, aqueous. But our copper to phosphate, that guy's a solid. Let's see how we could figure that out. Copper, Roman numeral 2, with phosphate. Phosphate with alkali ions, hydrogen, and ammonium is soluble. Copper is not an alkali ion. It's not part of this list. It's not hydrogen. It's not ammonium. It's in all others. So phosphate with anything else, insoluble. Copper 2 phosphate is a solid.